Hi everyone, it's Jay from Stocksford again, and we're at Knots and Lashes session six now. Hopefully you've had a good chance to use the um, sheer lashing from our last session to make your own tripod, make your own den. I'd love to see some pictures of those if you manage to do that. Now today we're going to look at one more lashing and it's the square lashing. This is really useful for making lots of practical things in the woodland, including our photo frames that we'll see in a moment. So you'll need a long piece of string, um, probably at least a meter long would be good because you've got to do quite a lot of in and outs and roundabouts with your string so a short piece is going to get used up really quickly. And then a couple of sticks, um, they just need to be about the thickness of your finger really, um, depends what you're going to make. So I've got a couple of sticks here and I think I'm going to square lash them so it makes a little pretend sword, a little play sword. So rather than in the middle, I'm going to have that down at the bottom. So to start off with, you've got to tie your string on to one of your sticks. Now you know from our previous sessions, there's lots of ways of doing that. You could do your overhand knots where we go over, under, through. You know I like using my clove hitch though, so I'm going to do my fishy in a dishy and put my fish on the dish and then put that through one of my sticks so that's tied on okay always like to leave a little bit of a tail because that's quite useful at the end sometimes so a little bit of a tail is quite useful now to square lash we actually put your other stick at right angles we talked about that yesterday didn't we for our frapping so we put that at right angles at 90 degrees and for our square lashing we wrap the string around in the shape of a square of our four sides. So I'm going to go over, can you see I've gone towards you, over, and then the next one will go under. So that one's over, this one's my side, it's coming under. And then we go over and under again. So I'm going to go over, can you see that's gone over the stick towards you, and then under towards me. Now already you can see I've got one, two, three, for the four sides of a square and I've gone around once so that's one square lashing but that's going to come apart how many times do we like to do things in the woodland three times so I'm going to go around again over use my other finger to trap it under over towards you under towards me and can you see I've tried I think so yeah I've tried to keep them as neat as possible and when you're lashing, remember we try and tuck it a little bit because we want them as tight as possible. So that's twice, let's do it again. So over towards you, under towards me, over towards you, under towards me, and yep, if you look there, I've got three lashes on each part of the wood. Now that is wobbling a lot. So just like with our shear lashing, we're going to frap the string. So frapping is where we go the opposite direction. So this time, it's a bit like I think of um, helicopter blades going round. We're going to go round this way now. So before I was coming towards the camera, this time we're going around. It's a different direction. And it's really important with our frapping that as you pull it round, you're pulling it tight. Because what it's doing is pulling together the lashing that you've done. So I'm going to pull that round, oh, up, round. So that's once, and we'll do that three times as well. This is quite a thick string. Thin string's absolutely fine. Let's do that twice. And a third time round, pulling it tight each time. There we go. Three times round. Now, we will need to tie this off, so you can do a little overhand knot, or, you know, I like to do a fishy and a dishy. Or if you like, if you had a tail left over, you could do two overhand knots over under three. So there's one. And then do a second one over under and three. And tie it off with the tail that you left at the beginning. Okay. So you could do a fish in a sheet, a clove hitch to finish off. Or use the tail that you had at the beginning. Now I can snip those little ends off if I don't like those. And... Oh, a bit, a bit of a wonky sword, haven't I? Could maybe use my uh, tools to, to trim that off later with my loppers. But I've got my sword there. 
and you can see that I've got quite a neat square lash. So square lashing is really useful for making things. Can you remember how we set, we did it? So we tied onto a stick with an overhand knot or with a clove hitch. Then we went over, under, over, under in the shape of a square. Did that three times. And then in the opposite direction, we went round with our frapping. Remember when you're frapping, it's really important to tug it each time. So the frapping squeezes in your square lashing. We started with a tail and I tied off the tail or you could use your clove hitch to tie off so it doesn't come undone. Now as well as things like a little play sword for our role play, if you square lash your sticks together closer towards the end, you'll end up with a corner. And if you do that with four sticks, like so, you can end up with a photo frame. Now this one's actually I think about a year old at least. It's been hanging up in the woodland a lot so it's gone a little bit wonky. But if I turn that round to the camera you can see very carefully easily that there's f the square lashing looks really effective. Let's find another corner. There we go. You can see going around up and down up and down to make our square lashing. Here's a great for some photo shots. I think I was out the frame yesterday or also for some artwork so you could take it round the woodland particularly if you make a smaller one hold it up and it's like a viewing window so you can look through that and see what is it in particular in that window that you can notice in the woodland do some observational skills quite often when we're looking around there's so much to see we miss out on the details so if you make a smaller one of these in fact to start off with you could just use your hands turn your hands around and you've got a little viewing window there that's a great way to just sit down, maybe lie down and look up into a tree. Remember not to look at the sun because that will hurt your eyes. But you could look up into a tree and look at just the small details that we often take for granted and miss. So it's a brilliant way. It's like a little instant camera, isn't it? To take a snapshot of what we can see. There's lots of games that you can do like that as well. You can actually get a partner to go and blindfold them and lead them up to something and then take their hands off for three seconds and they've just got to look straight ahead of them or maybe look through their camera close your eyes again it's like a little camera opening and closing and then with their eyes closed again they've got to describe what they could see so that's a fun little game just to see if you can remember what you looked at or you could use your photo frames to do that as well so have a go at doing your square lashing again we'd love to see comments from you on facebook or message us email us at jnc at stocksfordoc.co.uk we'd love to see how you're getting on in your gardens with these projects learning your knots and lashes and what we'll look at next time is other ways that you can use those maybe to make a, a spider's web where we can use our sheer lashing our square lashing and a little bit of weaving to make a spider's web so look forward to seeing you soon have lots of fun today all the best now bye